इंजीनियरिंग Uh, I had my masters in transportation engineering. In the transportation engineering, I had a subject of uh, contract law, or we call it construction law. So we had a subject of construction law, and that was really that caught my attention, and I was into it. And I thought, and at that time, I was doing my preparations for the Central Superior Services uh, for the higher uh, positions in the care and the government. and those preparations i had subjects of law related to law and i did my law bachelor's of law side by side along with my masters and i completed my law in around 2020 uh by studying law and engineering that is kind of i wanted to bring it to one platform and i thought construction law is the best platform for that purpose and then i got into it and when i got into construction law i get to know that the main thing in construction law is supposed to be adrs because the const- contractors or the clients or the employer they never get into litigation because that is a lengthy process that is a time consuming process that is not economical process so they are getting into arbitrations and they are getting into mediations and negotiation is the main uh, uh, agenda for them in the contract purposes so i got into adrs and then i had my um uh, i got an idea from someone someone recommended me the adr odr international institution and i had my mediation courses with them and then i had uh, the privilege and honor to be enlisted at the accredited mediators of uh, simi imi and cmc and uh, after that i had my odr courses with them i had my negotiation and executive conflict courses in dubai with them and i had my membership of car prime dispute along with it other institutions uh, society of construction law uh, asian institute of adrs so i got into this field and then i belong to a very tribal area of pakistan that tribal area consist like uh, we got to know about mediation really really after the independence of pakistan or even now in the current decade we get to know about mediation but in our area we use this practice since ages my four uh, fathers used to do this the jirga system if you heard of it the jirga system i belong to area there we exercise jirga system for my four fathers and uh, it was an agency first of all so i am into this culture uh, and this is in my blood to sit in jirga and to decide the dispute or if not to decide the dispute at least facilitate the dispute or if not the facilitator then at least be a counselor conciliate the dispute so that was also motivation behind my law after my engineering uh, to get into that thing that legalize my profession and what i do in my village so that it actually i am allowed to do it in courts and i can justify it in courts too so that's uh, me uh, and i'm currently practicing in construction law in corporate law uh contract negotiations uh, along with it uh, the fedic contract and when there is one thing in construction law that we call the claims uh, management uh, so we do the claims management for contractors and consultants so that is what i do in pakistan and that is how i am involved in mediations in family mediations in construction mediations in family arbitrations even in construction arbitrations uh so currently there is no family arbitration to be honest but there are a lot of construction arbitrations going on Uh, but mediation the family mediations are going on side by side and then i run a company by the name of 92 lakhs 92 lakhs and i am the managing partner in that and that company has uh, created an institute by the name of adr institute that adr institute is helping the people in the student specifically and who don't have too much amount of money to invest in into it but they just want to study mediation and they want to study the adr uh, methods so we provide those methods and we give them trainings and provide them a base to get into this adr field 
that's a lot of work but hasnan we need to get you totally into mediation we have to get you out of arbitration sure, sure, sure. that's, <laughs> that's my look that's my objective that's that, great that's great because it's a look i feel that it's a different mindset it's a different mindset and if you have like you you have that mediator mindset we want you totally working there but hasnan you will take us through that whole when you say that the traditional aspect of mediation the jarga system you might have to take us through that also because sure. we had that symposium last month on indigenous peoples and mediation so we were talking about this at the traditionally because the whole idea was let's talk about that separately let's talk about how indigenous people have been doing it for a long time then in this let's see how colonization affected it and of course in the decolonization process how is it going so that's the that was basically the way of i mean step by step that i wanted to do so, it so for so what i what i want to do just for a minute is that i just put up the my website where the information related to these whatever the symposia and all the other events that i do is available so that I, is could you see my website or you see something else yeah it's a website yeah perfect so that mediatorvikram.com and their idea being that of course all the connection things are there just important thing is just go to shows and events and links to all these events are here schedule is there all the youtube links are there world mediation circle is what i'm trying to put together so these are mediation circles we'll talk about it i'll talk about it as we go along and of course support that's the only way that the work keeps going on and of course the youtube channel which 400 plus videos there won't take more of your time on this people can watch it there just idea being that with these 400 plus videos how would you find out what is what so it's kind of an index so then from there the links are there so that's how it is so hasnan your show on the topic i keep saying get me if and when you want me to come in so sure. please yours <laughs> thank you vikram uh, vikram uh when you told me about the topic uh, i actually first of all thought it would be a discussion but then uh, you said i have to talk so uh when i when i think about the mediation and i think about the adrs but specifically about mediation uh, it takes me back to the times when there was no independence of uh, over my country and uh, i my family used to live in the village and we were there it take me back to the traditional ways of justice system that we call the informal justice system right uh, why we adopted that before the colonized pre colonized time because see among tribal population of my area my tribe that we call pashtun or pakhtun right they are most of them are illiterate they are poor and they have a lack of basic knowledge of accessing the formal justice system right so they have they needed a way out of it they needed a way in which they can take justice from these people are left with uh, the only options to follow the traditional ways of dispute resolution and that was way was which was convenient to them and that was jirgam and they get into jirgam so that was the pre colonized time when we used to have the the justice system was all about jirgam now we don't know much about jirga that what jirga was in our mind it was usually that jirga is a kind of implementation of a decision or the the elders of the society were there to implement the decision it was never like that the jirga is on the very first stage it is the mediation it is the mediation the masharan or the masharan we call the masharan as the elders of the society or the jirgamar who are the members of the jirga they were actually to facilitate the the parties and they were actually facilitating the parties until and unless it's the point that there was dispute arising out of the jirga if people are quarreling in between each other during the jirga so then they interfere and they said let us decide now but what i usually if i assess it it would be a mid art kind of situation but it was actually a mediation in the beginning and usually the jirga take place and the decisions are cleared and the dispute are resolved through mediation rather than going into implement imposing it but it was resolved uh, through mediation now 
In a society driven by cultural, social, political, and economical stratification, disputes are natural to arise. In Pashtun culture, the jirga system is the oldest and well-established institution. Jirga is an informal but exclusive institution existing in Pashtun society. Jirga is commonly used to settling the dispute related to both the private and public space. It is preferred over the formal courts as Jirga is considered to be more effective in quicker dispute resolving body. The Jirga exercises both executive and judicial roles and settles all dispute about the distribution of land, property, blood feuds, blood money, and other important inter-tribal affairs based on tribal conventions, traditions, and principles of justice. In Jirga proceedings, the judicial and executive functions are also exercised keeping in view the traditional and custom practice by the people in the tribal area of Pakistan. Now, if we talk about which areas of Pakistan the Jirga was exercised, so it's not some a very um, little amount of the country. Basically, there are the most of all, there are two provinces that covered Jirga. The one is KP, the one is Balochistan, and the third one now that is merged into the KP province, it was FATA, the federally administrative tribal areas. So there was Malakand Agency, Bajawad Agency, Mohammed Agency, Khaybar Agency, Aurakzai Agency, Kuram Agency, South Waziristan, North Waziristan, Balochistan. And then there was another concept similar to Jirga, that was Panchayat, that was in Punjab. Right? So this pre-colonized form of resolving dispute were existing in Pakistan. We call it the informal justice system because People were believing in it. People were not literate. People were poor. People were uh, people were not having much information or much access to the formal justice system. So people were into this, and that was really really effective. And then there was even the distribution of jirga. There were three actually types of jirga in which the disputes were different, in which the uh, parties were different, in which the concept of the the methodology is different. So the first type of was Koranai or Shaksi Jarga. So that was, we call it Koranai or Shaksi Jarga in Pashto, but it means a, a Jarga that is supposed to resolve the dispute among the families that we call the family mediation. The informal structure for dispute to resolve the family dispute in which both the parties are included. And that was supposed to take place either in a guest house either in a hujra, that is a public open space to sit, or either in the third party house who is not a party to the dispute so that everyone can speak easily. And in, in that whole process, the mediator is sitting there or the mediators are sitting there and they are listening to the dispute and they are just letting the parties speak, not getting into it. They are just asking the party to explore and to destabilize the issue. And they are just exploring and destabilizing the issue and telling everything to the, but it was in person. Everyone was talking to each other and because the, the, the mediators were actually the elders of the society and the party selected them to, be medi to mediate that. So they respected the medi mediators. They respected, they showed the gratitude to the mediators and they were not getting they were polite to each other because of the respect to the elder. But the elder was sitting there to facilitate the issue, just to, because sometimes the issue is not what it seems to be. It is back in the mind of it. And the elders know how to bring that thing that is back of the mind to the front to get to the details of the, uh, the issue and to resolve it. So that was the concept of Korane or Shaksi Jarga. And then we get into the second type of jarga, that is Ulasi or Qami jarga. Qami jarga, as the name, Qam means nation, community, Qam, right? So we call it that it is an informal structure for dispute that were supposed to resolve the dispute between the communities. It was on a bigger level, the mediation of a bigger level that used to resolve the disputes of uh, property, that used to resolve the disputes of rights, that used to resolve the dispute of irrigation, of, of water channel, water channel irrigation, 
and identification of school land or any specific purposes the land is dedicated for. So if the dispute related to land, the dispute related to property or the dispute related to water channels or rights of people, then that sort of mediation takes place and it's called Qaumi Jargam. And that Qaumi Jargam, it held and used to happen in a big open space where everyone can speak and discuss. And it was expected from the people to listen and respect all the members. And the authority that we used to talk and sometimes and the authority of facilitating the mediation that we called walk. Walk is a Pashto word that was given to the Jarga members to facilitate the mediation. For example, in a community, when there are two communities sitting together, it's, a, it's difficult for mediator to control them to control them so that the mediation can take place in a smooth way. And that authority to control them, to be polite and settle down, that was given to the mediator and that type of jarga, right? And the announcement for the jarga, for example, if uh, I am doing a mediation, so usually what I do now is that I'll email both the parties or I'll meet the more both of the parties or I'll call them. But in that kind of mediation, that at that time the phones were not there, the email uh, facility was not there. So what used to happen is that they used to do, we call it nakara or dole, and we call it. They used to uh, strike the dole and the band, right? To decide and they will announce it very highly with high tone, the time and the venue for the jarga that this jarga, this mediation will take place at this place and at this time. And both the communities are supposed to be there and the mediators will be these, 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 and the mediators will be sitting there, right? And the mediators again are very respectful, very elder people of uh, the society. And they used to carry the uh, facilitate, they used to carry the position of a mediator and they used to facilitate it on a bigger level, on a community level. And then when the times were going, in the times of around 1700, when we are talking about in 1700, another type of jarga was generated. And that jarga was called loya jarga. Loya means grand jarga. Even the loya jarga concept now is ex even exercised in Afghanistan currently. The loya jarga concept. The loya jarga concept was that it is on the highest level. The first loya jarga was, uh, was uh, between six tribes uh, to choose the ruler that who will be the ruler of us, the six tribes. And those tribes were Dahis, Parnis, uh, Khiljis, Barats, and Baloch. Right? So the, the concept of Loya Jarga, uh, because we don't have the actual evidence to it that when it gets started, but the actual is that in 1700, it was before 1700, but the 1700, it, it, we have the proof to that. The first Loya Jarga took place. And the Loya Jarga, Loya means Grand Jarga. Grand and jarga is jarga, right? So it is the biggest kind of jarga. And what it discusses, it discusses the intertribal issues now. For example, community is a small part of it, but tribe is a huge part of it. So if there are multiple tribes and you are going to discuss and you are going to resolve the dispute of them using the ADR or specifically the mediation process or the conciliation process, then lawyer jarga takes place. What happens is both the tribes select mediator from their behalf. Right, And there is a panel of mediators. The mediators sit there and they listen to the tribe in a very open space on a national level. It's actually taking place on a national level. It's a national level jargon. And then the tribal heads gather at open ground and discuss the issue and ask the party to move towards the solution. But in this Luya jargon, they have the authority, they have the actual authority to impose something rather than the, up, the other two options. The other two options were actually facilitating the actual mediation process. They were facilitating the parties that let parties speak and let us hear the parties what the party is saying. But in Luya Jarga, because it's it's including the national purpose of it, so they were uh, involving the imposition of this award too, right? Then if we see Patan or Pukhtun tribes are very much diverse. It's in Pakistan, it's in Afghanistan, some of them are even in India. Uh, and they are very kind of rigid people. 
bringing it, bringing them to one unit uniform platform is really difficult so this whole tribe and the elders of these tribes used the mediation process for the social integration of all of these people because there was no concept of the formal justice system or court system so all they were supposed to depend depend on for the justice or for the adal system they were looking forward to the masharan of it to the jirga of it and they were respecting the jirga they were accepting the jirga so this was actually the concept of jirga uh, how it took place and then after colonization came into these pieces they like give uh, they brought a lot of new concepts to this area uh, although they did not rule the malakkan area but they had the control of the whole pakistan and india and the fata sector all of it till the border of afghanistan uh, but malakkan swat in this area was were independent at that time they were princely states and they were just working along with uh, the british but malakkan is still known as the malakkan i belong to the malakkan by the way so malakkan the we used to call it the protected area so it was not under the rule of british but they were exercising their own uh, justice system and they were having their own control on the area but when they came into this area they actually destroyed our traditional way of uh, justice system legal system any kind of system that were present in the traditional manner and they brought the english system of law they brought every other concept that was exercised for them and that we see that we have a difference of cultures sometimes it's difficult to adopt the culture of them we are easy in our own culture now when the formal court system get into entered into our area our our uh, our country what they actually did is that people were not used to it people were not understanding it they don't know how to assess it they don't know how to make it accessible for us so it made it lengthy process the the cases were burdened on the court and still now till now the court is really burdened and they don't know how to deal with it because it started back back then and that was creating a lot to the judges uh, so the when the colonization uh, took place in this area uh, the traditional ways people wanted to adopt the traditional ways but were forced to involved into the formal court ways and that created problem for them to choose which side should we go for example it's really confusing now that the the high court jurisdiction in malakkan still now till now is not there right and then in the same malakkan division there are other districts where high court jurisdiction is exercised so the, the confusion were created for the people to choose which side of the law either we should go for the traditional jirga system but either will the, the jirga system be legalized no it is not the jirga system is not legalized by the state so they are supposed to if jirga decides something they can go against it so either that is now a way of mediating things or not but that mediation things mediation thing the, the way the the traditional local people or the communities used to exercise the mediation or the conciliation or the arbitration process to resolve the disputes now they are going into litigation because the traditional ways are disturbed by the colonized world and that what how we are facing it when they left after 1947 and we didn't have a constitution till 1956 that was the most chaotic time we were in chaos what we are supposed to do there is no constitution we are following till 19 from 1947 till 1956 we are following the indian act 1935 right so what were we supposed to do in that time they gen- okay 1956 the constitution came there and then the laws were there but then again we are facing the the how the influence we have the influence of colonized world we are still the local people the the urban people urbanized people are well aware of that because they are educated one they are literate one but the village people or the local people they are not aware of it they need to they are easy and they are happy with their traditional ways but the traditional ways are not legalized by the state because the jirga system is 
not something that is accepted by the judiciary because there is that is more based on the equity rather on the law and they wants everything according to the law not an equity based so the colonization what what colonization did to our dispute resolving the mediation process that we call jurga it create a confusion or chaos for the people to select either to go for the traditional ways or go for the formal court ways and we are still after even 75 years we are still facing that confusion because locally still now locally the mediation take place in the villages it's still going on if there is a dispute the elders of society sit there and they specifically specifically in the family disputes because in the family disputes they don't want to take this dispute to the courts because it will expose them it will and they are they never want to get exposed because it's the matter of family they want to protect the family they want to keep the secrets of the family and they don't want to get embarrassed in front of the whole public right so what they do is that they still exercise that thing but then what happens before that it never happened that the jurga decision when once the jurga decide something actually mediate something the parties agree to that it was supposed to be exercised and it was supposed to happen now what happens that they get to know a little bit about the formal system and when the jurga mediate something in the parties agree to the mediation decision the jurga go the, the part one of the party can go against the jurga system or one of the party can go against the mediation system which is actually i think against the rule of mediation that you involve the court into the mediation the mediation is the beauty of mediation is that the party has the authority to decide for themselves and that is the actual value uh, beauty of uh, mediation and that as that is disturbed by the involvement of judiciary or the judicial system or the courts into the the mediation system or even in, for that matter into the adr system so that was about the traditional in the pre colonized time and the colonization when they brought the formal court system into my and the localities of uh, subcontinent or specifically in the tribal areas and even in the same way in fata there was fata federal administration administrate uh, federal uh, administration was there the fata they have a, a, a rule of fcr or fr fcr they have a rule of fcr right fata crime regulations and that was specifically accepting the jirga system and that jirga system what they did actually that the district administration that we call the for example in uh, in our country we call it the deputy commissioner the deputy commissioner was actually the part of the jirga and that we call sarkari jirga so there were tribes the elders of the tribes were sitting there and then there was the administration sitting there and the administration has a list of a jirga for that locality for example if i belong to a, a specific locality for that locality they have created a set of jirga mars the members of jirga and that jirga mars were actually the heads of every tribe or every house and then dc was there the the, the deputy commissioner was there and he used to be the mediator of it right so it was exercised but then again in 2018 i guess uh, the if the fata was merged into kpk and the fcr system is abolished now so again the court system intervened and now there are high court jurisdiction into fata and they are exercising their powers but the court system it automatically i believe it demolishes the system of mediation or adrs because they prefer litigation and everyone now is going to the litigation and the lot for the judges are getting more and more and more and even the people are not happy with litigation the people are actually was and the people were actually happy with mediation and arbitration in the jurga system because they accepted it they knew that it is the decision of the masharan they were accepting the masharan they were respecting the masharan and they said okay fine we are happy fine if somebody something i am getting something he is getting something fine but in the litigation system one one of the party is supposed to lose and that party is not happy so the influence of colonization is that what colonization did they brought the formal very organized but formal court system into this country and after after leaving it after the decolonization of it after 1947 when we got the independence 
we are still having that influence of formal support system. And what we are not doing is that we are not following that we are not adopting or mixing the traditional ways into our legal system. For example, that is supposed to happen that if we brought the foundational informal justice system and somehow organized it into the legal system of Pakistan, that would eventually make people confident about going to the mediations or even the KP province, the Khyber Pukhtunkhwa province where the Jarga is more and more influenced there, they started a system of, we call it DRC, the Dispute Resolution Councils. And it, it's actually a kind of mediation, which actually it's the, more of a conciliation, but mediation, right? And what they do is that uh, they bring the, the government, bring people You, you disappeared. I mean, I think you got some signal issue came in. So I just put that on the screen. Okay. You, I, I don't know at what point the, you were talking about the DRC and then, yeah. Yeah, the DRCs. So we can see the DRCs were created in KB province. And it's, I believe, the most effective step or productive step towards bringing the mediation into the legal system again. And it was the need of time. It was the need of time because I told you that these whole province, the whole KP province, they used to do the mediation. They used to do the uh, Jirga system. And taking it away from them would create a great chaos for them. So what the government or the state did, that they created DRCs for them. The DRCs are dispute resolution councils. So they have established a very amazingly decorated rooms. And that is a complete kind of look of a code to them. There are There is an upper seat for the mediators and there are seats for the parties and the, even the, the people who support them. And uh, this, what they do is actually the, the state, what the state do is that if there is an issue for any community, uh, they select the elders from that community and they make them sit as on the position of mediator or conciliator. I believe it's more of a conciliation, but they make it then sit on the conciliation or the mediator post. And what in that mediation take place in the same process and local level, the parties come there, they discuss, they discuss and discuss if there is a possible solution for the parties to see, the parties get into it and accept their solution. If not, then they go towards the litigation. But that is the actual bringing the traditional mediation or jirga system back into the law, which is beautiful, which is prog productive. And uh, we see being a lawyer, I, I can see that actually it is helping our people. It is actually helping our people. For example, in the UK law, we study the pre-action protocol. It is a kind of pre-action protocol before the litigation, but in the way, in the manner of mediation, which is the most favorable uh, manner, I believe should, should take place. Let the party decide for themselves, right? And even now what, what happens in the court is that if there is a case and it's going on in the court, the court is actually preferred to DRCs that go to DRCs and try to resolve it first of all, right? And if there, there is a family dispute, and let's say in the dissolution of, ma dissolution of marriage, um, uh, uh, if we talk about dissolution of marriage, the court, actually the family court, ask them to mediate it. Just go and mediate it before coming to the court. Mediate it three times. On the, on the for example, Islamic Sharia law is that you are supposed to consult each other for three months. So mediate it for three times, consult three times, and then come to the courts. So it's actually, they are taking steps now to bring that traditional foundational informal justice system that was satisf satisfying, the people were satisfied by that, and the people were happy by that, uh, bringing back to the uh, legal system. But it's, it is taking time. It is a slow process. It is taking time. It should never have been abolished by completely by the colonized formal system, but it did happen. And now they are taking care of it. Hasan, really very well explained. I think we've taken the entire thing. I mean, I, of course, there will be some things to discuss, but largely you've covered everything. I, I really like the way you've done it from the 
pre colonial to the other uh, thing because i think what what basically one idea of this discussion was also that people need to connect to a word which is familiar to them because mediation being a word that they are not familiar with and then we go and tell them this is mediation they don't even know what that word means and then are they, i mean like is it really someone else coming and deciding for us what's really happening here because you're exactly. introducing something so i think the ones that you the words that you have in the traditional system that need, they need to connect to that and like you said how does that become enforceable in the court system so that people then because i mean it, interestingly like we have a law which is arbitration and conciliation act exactly now our conciliation is mediation i mean i don't distinguish between mediation and conciliation only because we got the law in 1996 when the uncitral was using the word conciliation and we were progressive we took it but in india everyone is saying we don't have a law on mediation so i i keep fighting that because i'll tell you it's the best law on mediation why because total flexibility is there they can, people can choose their own i here i'm using the word conciliator because that's the word used there but that is mediation because what i do is i look at the definition in the singapore convention and i say okay this is what is the only definition we have otherwise nowhere in the law anywhere is mediation defined so we will for interpretation of statutes we'll go there once we look at that of course our conciliation is covered there i have to explain to people that this is mediation and i'm go- very good law and the best part is that at the end of it that settlement agreement is as good as a consent award which is as good as a court decree so even in the traditional system if they appoint their own mediators or conciliators if you call to call them and that becomes enforceable as a court decree so i think a simple law which people can understand they don't need to have, go to someone to interpret the law itself because we are moving towards that because like i said people have created this confusion there's no law on mediation so a bill was put into parliament complicated i mean a layman sitting in a village should be able to understand the law without going to a lawyer settle the matter between themselves settlement agreement you don't have to go and in get it registered nothing it's a, it's as good as a court decree with you because look the idea being settlement agreement should not need to go into court at all largely you will fall it there might be some rare cases for that don't get this person in a village to come to a court because that's not something that they have access to when you're creating a layer so i think that is a very good law for me which of course people are trying to change that's another story that happens so i think that part of it i think your traditional system seems to be quite i mean uh, people use it it's been used now what uh, even uh, sorry to cut you off um, what i'm actually doing now is that uh, actually we understand mediation when we talk about mediation there are if we look into youtube or somewhere i actually uh, check uh, check your youtube channel too and you are doing really great work on mediation uh, and actual work, vikram uh what we are bringing to the platform is that for example when you are talking mediation we have a v- even for mediation we have set a organized system that is given to us by former people and we do mediations in english what actually i am bringing now is that i am making it easy for the people i am making people able to do mediations in urdu the, the same rules were adopted but i am actually giving them a room to develop that how we can actually exercise mediation a formal international standard of mediation in this language because the language is just a way to communicate so why that should be a barrier for people yeah. for example if i'm a very good mediator but if i don't know how to communicate in my local language with people that is of no use because mediator is supposed to have the great eye contact he is supposed to be very much having the communication with people so i'm working on that that portion to to eliminate the factor of language barrier from mediation because that is one of the factor mediation is understood as you said that it is understood by the people for but for the layper people who don't understand it you need to make it simple for them you need to bring it to their level to understand it rather than making it complex for them or mediation is these formalities don't get into complexities just keep it simple for them that mediation is the purpose that we want you to solve your problem and i am sitting here because i'm you respect me and you will listen to me to speak on your own time that's it yeah i and think this yeah. exactly 
So basically, that respect and trust. Those are the two aspects, and once that comes in, everything and informality of it is really required. I mean, like I said, I mean, here the whole mediation is coming through the court system, where you, the whole structure. A person say walks into a mediation center in a court. You already got him into a in environment which he's not comfortable with, because I think as lawyers we walk into a court because that's where we go for that is normal. Mm-hmm. For a person coming like I, I always say village because look, we are sixty percent rural population. Exactly. I, and Pakistan also has a lot of rural population too. I belong to a village, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so I am proud of that. <laughs> exactly. So and that's I mean, look, I am trying to create that whole environment that exactly. people that that I, they should not be able to need to go out for something so simple as a dispute resolution between themselves. So the to, so that this way that's why this decolonization aspect. I think we really need to move in a very. I mean, we've already moved on to a system which I feel is still a colonial system, exactly. which we will when we compare. I'm saying our penal codes are what was given by the British. <laughs> we've continued I those. Actually, I was actually applying for my bar. Uh... A month, a few months ago, I am appearing for my bar. So they asked me that, why you think we should give you exemptions? And I thought because because I have studied your law, <laughs> that is completely your law I studied. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I say I think that we, we picked up from the British. We took the same laws, and even the civil procedure code. Taking the same civil procedure code, Pakistan, India, continuing the same thing. So I mean, we might say decolonization, but we really haven't moved in that direction. So I think we need to first of all look at it from a very local perspective, which is what you're bringing in. That look, all this existed. I think a lot of it is also lost in a lot of countries. That aspect got lost. So at least you bringing that in, and which is I'm telling you, oh, so much that you have spoken about. A lot people have not got so much information as to what was happening. So I think that part of it to stick to it and to create a framework around that, rather than wanting to fit this into a framework. Exactly. I think so. I think what you're talking about, I think exactly is what is required. And I think for the similarity in traditional systems, I mean, like you said, the dhol. I mean, the announcing exactly. to the village. Now we had someone in the last symposium from a tribal area in one part of India saying the same thing that in our area that's what they do. They come and announce, and that's it. So I'm saying exactly. there is a there is some. This is like a very basic way of in involving everyone. Exactly. So this is that's the difference between the colonial system and our traditional systems. Here, we all idea was everyone is involved because a community in whatever way is. Affected by a dispute. Affected by a dispute, true. And a colonial system was: you come to me, I am the one who I, controls everything for you because you need that control if you want to rule over a population. So I think you have to be able to understand. And I think if we can do it as soon as we can, we really started on a uh, on a local level rather than creating law on a national level. For example. Uh, uh, a day after a day before yesterday i got a letter from someone and what the high court is doing now is that they are actually selecting the lawyers of high court and then there is cir pakistan now and they are actually training the mediators now which is an amazing thing an amazing thing but my there is a reservation that i feel that you are actually teaching or you are actually training the people who has a huge amount of litigation cases and they are getting money out of it why would they go to mediation you should train people who are new to this law system you should train them so that they choose mediation as a field not as a side kick but as a field to do that and actually mediation in this local or i call it somehow the informal justice system the alternative dispute resolution that is that is not supposed to be merged into litigation that is supposed to be an independent field to practice absolutely and that would actually bring the idea of it and it would actually highlight the idea of it to the uh, to the front and that would actually beneficial be beneficial not mixing it for example if i i don't get cases in litigation so i am going to mediation no it is it should not be the purpose mediation should be a separate and identified field in this because that is what we who we are 
that is what we we come from and we should accept that and that is the most beautiful feeling you accept it where i am coming from and if i'm uh, as uh, there is an indian politician who is really good in english friend is it shashi tharoor is it <laughs> shashi tharoor right he said that if you don't know where you have come from how can you appreciate where we are going absolutely yeah right so we should know where have you have come from so that we appreciate where we are going No, I think this is what you. I mean, the whole idea. I also been saying that look, this has to be standalone. Don't connect it to the courts for one reason because of the fact that people look at courts in a totally different manner. And once they are looking at a court from the fact of someone deciding for you, to be able to understand, look, this is something that we have to do within ourselves. This is our decision within ourselves to bring that because this is also a decolonizing of people of their mindset. over these hundreds of years if people have been told that someone is going to decide for you and you moved into that track to get them out of it definitely have to cut out of the court that definitely has to happen but the, on the other end because we've stuck to our colonial concept of course the structure so the whole concept of courts being the place where people come for dispute resolution that is what you put in their mind and with mediation also put there then you are still creating that environment you're not moving away from it so to for the courts i i i understand its convenience you are you have backlog and you'll hear me repeating all this every time whenever whatever so there will be repetition you'll hear this but you i i, I don't know i have to keep talking about it only because when i see that for your own convenience you are actually affecting the development of mediation one because you're connecting it to courts the other you're connecting it to free that's the worst thing that has happened because this is a profession i don't know profession i'm using that word but that is also it debatable it's a profession yeah, it's supposed to be a profession i but i still keep it open is it a way of I life is it a profession if somebody ask if somebody ask me or somebody ask you that vikram what do you do for living so you are supposed to say i am a mediator that exactly. is a beautiful profession actually yeah so but i i kept it open for i said like let us not get into a debate on whether it's a profession doesn't matter to me as long as i am a mediator and i it's a way of life for me i'm okay is it a way of life is it profession so i don't even want to categorize it so but i'm just saying that you are affecting the development which can be a livelihood for people who are passionate about that they have the mindset for that so that is getting affected because over tens of years i'm saying if you even if you look at the situation in the us being a place where so they say from this come from the court system it hasn't helped them and we can't afford to go in that direction because i keep giving these figures that 100 million cases going into courts in the us on a 300 million population if india does that we'll have 400 million matters <laughs> going into court we can't <laughs> handle 18 million what 400 million can we even afford to go in that direction so we have to go like you said on the traditional system be able to strengthen that part of it but you spoke about training and you will hear me saying that look like hasnan has the mediator mindset with or without training he is has that natural ability i'm very clear about that and let's identify those which you also going to work with me on that let's at the village level at the community level at the school level let's just ask people about these people who have the mediator mindset because finally people have to trust these people we can go and tell everyone okay this is mediation and give them all kinds of training as it is called but finally they have to trust the person so trust is the first thing so now ask them whom do you trust and they already have those people so let's bring them into the fold whatever skill development so i keep i have used i have used the word terminology skill development because i keep saying that the skill is there people can get a lot of idea on mediation but we'll put in a full structured program i have no problem i'll get the best in the world to put give those lectures but let's give it to people who already are trusted so that first concept i if you talk about training in all these institutions all these role plays and mock mediations finally what is the idea that the user should have a good experience i am starting from the first step is whom do you have a user good user experience with so one layer is <laughs> done you've done I this second beyond that i second because uh, i have an uncle and uh, uh he is not having any formal education of mediation and on the other side i actually studied mediation i am watching mediations i am doing mediations but when we have a concept of hujra so hujra is a very big local place where 
everyone sit and have teas and have meals and everything and that is an open pashtun culture a very big open space and when he sits in that and he start talking everyone everyone he is that created that aroma around himself and everyone is looking towards him because he knows that how to gain the trust of people and he knows that how to make people listen to you and he know that how to make people trust you to share their lives with you and then he is actually handling the 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 every issue of the village right so he is sitting there and he is listening to people and when i look at him i see he should have been the mediator of this whole village <laughs> because right. you can see that spark in that guy that he is actually mediating a lot of things without studying it he know how to uh, he has he knows the simple the empathies of people and he handles those empathies he know that how to think and the sh- keeping ourselves in the shoes of other people and that is beautiful being a mediator so you are very much accurate on that that it's the skill that need to be developed rather than the actual education of it exactly i'm saying look i'm saying that if we go to your uncle and we give him a theoretical aspect of it those words are not required those theoretical words what is batna what he already knows all that he knows he's not using those words and he doesn't need to because he's already in his mind it's already and he knows when to use it he knows which person because it's a look it's a very specific individual situation every situation is going to be different the person is unique everyone is unique so to hand dealing deal with anyone to be able to adapt to people on a one to one basis all the time it's something which has to be natural you have you have to be natural there's no other way you can't be prepared because the next conversation you're going to be having is going to be a totally different one with a totally different person so to be able to adapt to all that it needs a lot of thing another thing that you said about the fact the kind of atmosphere he creates around himself that's an energy that exactly. only some people can bring that in which is what i when i i had one symposium on heart soul spirituality and mediation so yeah i uh, looked into the youtube yeah. channel so the idea was to bring this out that it's not as simple as you put it it's a lot that is going on out there the energy aspect of it how you're connecting to the person because look i'll tell you training as such that is happening it's very very simplistic i mean active listening kind of a word a terminology at you but here i keep saying you're listening from the heart you're listening to the soul you're connecting on a very different level that exactly. which you, no training can put that in you it's a it's a person to person kind of thing so i think we need to bring these people out and if look one part of it they already have a certain whatever i'm saying a social standing which is of course which gives them that respect and trust but also at the same time they might not be looking at it as a livelihood so they will already already have something but if we can develop something where they should be able to do it on a full time basis that'd be the best thing that can happen because that look you need be lots of them you need lots of people out there who because finally what is really happening disputes if they can actually be resolved at that stage at i mean imagine how much you can first of all the process after that the kind of environment that is created because of those disputes finally look it's a community that you're living in it affects the community there are relationships which get affected there's so much which happens and we can't understand that too much because we moved into an urban atmosphere where anyway relationships are very different communities are very different now to build communities here is going to take time which is a long term thing which i keep saying that the people with the mediator mindset will have to bring communities together because then the community aspect is important in the whole thing but where already communities exist let's work there those will be things that people can take look you might be it might be easy for people to oh they live in villages look they bring in a very natural concept of relationships and the social structures which are existing we have to i'm not saying that villages have not been affected materialism definitely has affected villages i they are not going to be immune to that they are also bombarded by social media and a lot of factors so their things are changing but might not have changed so much so let's create those foundations there and that will be something that people can look at oh they've done that i am saying what let's pick up hasnain picks up one village and says his own village and says like i'm going to make this dispute free becomes a model people who actually uh, i mean they actually see mediation working they will become the ambassadors of mediation further they will take it to other people those villages exactly. 
will then propagate it. I, I'm looking at it from that way if we have to really develop mediation. Otherwise, the formal... Yeah, con- actually yeah. help in another manner too. For example, recently I had an, uh, encountered my brother is a driver. So uh, I went to my brother's office and the driver was coming behind me. So I asked him what happened. And he said, uh, do you know a lawyer? And I said, for what? And he said, I have some family issue. So I said, why don't you go for Jarga? So he said, we went for Jarga, but uh, the decision was not uh, up to the mark. So we want to go for uh, litigation. So I said, why don't you want to go for a legal Jarga? And he said, what does that mean? <laughs> so I said, what if we ask the court to go uh, to us? But I think there's a signal issue which has happened. Hello. There's a signal issue which has happened. So, yeah, if there was a signal issue at the point of legal jarga. That you told him about the legal jargon. Am I audible? You're audible. I mean, I can just about hear you, but the voice is cracking up. For a moment, yeah. I think there seems to be a signal issue there. Yep, you're back. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, am I audible now? You're audible. It was just a little cracking up of the voice, which was. Yeah, happening. I can hear you too. Yeah. So that's the point that people need to be aware about this whole concept of mediation. That, that I think the signal just goes up and down. So right now, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, got, a, it's got affected a little bit. Of course, I can see red lines there, so which means that it's gone down a little bit. For a moment, what we can do is, what you could do is maybe if you want to put your video off for a minute, and then when the signal comes back, then I'll ask you to put it on. Yeah. So you, so you were talking about the driver and the legal jarga, and it, the voice got it started cracking but Actually, up. what happened is that uh he didn't know about it and the point is that the family disputes are usually easy to resolve through mediations because the issues are not that much of intense issues it's simply the matters of ego or some or sometimes it's the miscommunication and you just need to resolve it through make them speak about it so we need what we need to do is that make people aware of this process of mediation and that would eventually help them to get to this thing rather than go, going for everything to litigate it we are not supposed to go for litigation in every matter absolutely and that's the, that's the whole idea of that whole culture of mediation to develop that but again hasna finally it is the matter of getting the right people to them because if the, if the right people with the mediator mindset are not available, then the whole concept falls. So I am trying to work ground upwards that let's identify those people first. So we put them out as, okay, these are the people with that mediator mindset who are there. Whoever you trust out of them, please take them as your mediator. So at least then what is basically what I keep saying, the user experience is guaranteed. And once the user experience is guaranteed, then obviously the the whole concept takes off. I don't know how you look at that. But I think there is still a signal issue there. What else? I th- you'll just have to Is unmute it yourself. Fine, still red. Uh, right now, it's not showing me the bars right now, but if you 
unmute yourself then i can see the bar I think it's fine now, Vikram. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I hear, I can hear you. So, so what I was saying was that I think identifying the right people, I think that's where we start. But you are on mute right now. I think you were on. It's fine. Yeah. So I think that identifying the right people, and we take it from there, so that the user experience has to be good. Only then will it's word of mouth. Finally, it's all word of mouth. That's the way it develops. Otherwise, by telling people and giving them a technical word or something is not going to work. So first, I think connect them to the right word, and because actually what the word panchayat that's been that's used in India. Now what okay. happens here is that over time the panchayat became some they became a, a group of people who actually imposed imposed their decisions, which was obvious. Like you said, it was not supposed to be like that. The idea was that you're trying to mediate it, and that's how it should have happened. But then it moved into totally that. So today, if I use the word panchayat for them, for anyone in the village, they understand someone taking a decision for you. Exactly. So, so it is a it's counterproductive now. So I first you have to then distinguish because look there are a lot of people who go out and promoting mediation and it is convenient to use the word panchayat. I keep telling people our own Supreme Court has a training manual for mediation where they use the word panchayat, but the villager doesn't understand it as mediation. They understand it as a decision making body. So you're connecting them with the wrong word. So I think that part of it is something we need to do because they don't want another person coming in. They'd rather go to court then. So we have to be able to explain that. But tell me, Hasan, what about what about sulhe? Sulhe being a word that we use here, but is there a word that is used? I mean, are we using sulhe? We call it sulhe too. Uh, uh, but uh, that is on a national level we call it sulha. But sulha. But uh, in Pashto culture we call it roga. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, the same thing, uh, but actually I think that is a concept, but I don't know if I can connect it to mediation because uh, it's not some a setting of it, but it's actually talking to someone and then talking to the other person and ask them to, for the sake of the harmony, let's get together. I think I see it in that perspective because I have, uh, never experienced it. Uh, experienced it in my village, the roga system. For example, if two people uh, they uh, have quarrelled with each other or they are in dispute, so what I or my family or anybody is doing is that we go to one family and we talk to them, and then if the other family don't like me and they like someone else, so we ask them to talk to them, and we talk to them and we ask them that for the sake of harmony, because a lot of relations are involved when we are talking about uh, villages. The, every relation is connected to the other relation somehow. So we ask them that for the sake of harmony and for the sake of keeping all the relation uh, integrated, let's not get into disputes and let's resolve it and just give each other a hug. So that's Absolutely. the concept of roga. The sula concept, I've never ex experienced if that is the same thing or not, but the word sula means uh, exactly the same uh, roga in Pashto. Okay, because I, do, the, I was saying about our act, the conciliation part of it, translated that act translated into hindi uses the word sulay and i think people will connect to that word I, they understand exactly. but now like you said is it a peacemaking process only because i i in my views read that on my yeah, website I, for, uh, I i'm not aware of the sula process because i've never uh, studied it or into it or experienced it but i have uh, known the concept of roga uh, practically so I know how roha works. 
instead of how sula works uh, so roga is actually a peace making process yeah because in my if you read about it in my website that world mediation circle so i am saying we need three categories of one is of course the people who should who want to resolve the dispute through mediation but then mediators and peacemakers because both of them are required the people to go to one a participant i call them participant not parties because it's a, i mean this was something that in my world mediators conference someone very nicely said that why are we using the word words from the court system so so i i feel that getting people together is also a skill it's not easy to be like you said to speak to one side and getting the right people to speak to the other side it's that by itself is a skill and a process so i said let's have peacemakers let's have the mediators because you have to value that skill that the mediator brings in don't try to merge it with just a casual someone is just getting you to sit together no there's a skill there so value that skill so i'm mean, trying to put it in those two categories so what you're saying is that that also exists as a process in at least at the, there is a roga i mean that's there is even a sula process in pakistan but i am not aware of it there yeah. is a sula process in pakistan yeah so we'll have we can have a maybe we can at some point discuss that and see whether that word because i'm saying look I, there will be various parts of pakistan so some people might connect to sula and if it's a mediation process so let's connect them to that similarly let me just read it and we we can discuss it some other day then yeah maybe i'll be and maybe on the last day on 30th we exactly. have a learnings and key takeaways Uh, it starts at 8:30 india time so we, at that point we can then further discuss this sure. aspect sure, that's perfect. Sure. perfect that's perfect so so any final concluding remarks well uh, i don't want it to be concluding remarks i yes, want yes, to yes, 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 go yes. on gone for that but uh, i believe uh, that uh, it's a high time that we realize the fact that we need to start the justice system or reform the justice system from the lower level from the foundational level from local level from villages from the for the lay people instead of just making laws on the national level we need to work on the lower level that what the, what is the demand of the local people and that would actually bring a huge amount of change because most of the disputes are arised from the local area so i think that would be a great thing if we bring the traditional ways of mediation into the legal system of the country because i well, look, i've been also saying that look there is one is mediation the other is the role of mediators so there is a much larger role that mediators need to play which is going to be as if you get the right people they will play that role but but uh, hasnan what about the criminal justice system is there something happening there where there is a like you have restorative practices that you have is there something like that which is developing uh when the criminal uh, if we talk about in in the context of the jirga system the criminal used for used to follow the criminal for the criminal justice they used to follow the sharia sharia uh, code of islam right uh, and that was rigid that was rigid but usually the decisions were uh, based on diyat uh, on some financial compensation of it rather than going to the violent side of the hudud laws but usually but there were practices in the hudud laws uh, the i for the i concept right qisas uh, wala concept uh, in the in the local system uh, actually follows uh, the 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 formal court system also follows the hudud or the qisas in the diyat system so i think for the jirga or for uh, the court system for the criminal law from the criminal practice it's the same thing the decision are supposed to be the same thing but the difference is the court process would involve the hearings and the trials and the examinations and cross examination and re examination and all of it and usually the jirga take place in two sessions and it de- uh, decide in two uh, two sessions so which is in a quicker process for justice uh, but the court and the jirga both follows in criminal manner they follows the shariat court uh, the shariat court and that involves to either tazir or either diyat uh, either sorry hudud so whatever the court decide or the jirga decide okay so we, that be i think we that be a separate discussion we can there, that, right? that is a very separate yeah. discussion because criminal uh, they are very much sensitive on the criminal side usually the local areas Uh, usually the local areas don't go into jirga for criminal purposes they just go and take their revenge <laughs> <laughs> so then 
lovely talking to you and it was uh, lovely meeting we're, you. we're going to be doing we'll be developing this as we go along so thank you very much and i'll see you on the 30th for sure thank you vikram for the opportunity and looking forward to hear more from you yeah absolutely thank so you thank you thank you